Hey everybody, welcome back to Tanner's Books and Beyond, today with a very belated book review for the novel Not Always Specified by Hannah Moskowitz. So I read this for Diversathon several months ago in September, and I loved it, and I've noticed that I kept on bringing it up in other videos that I've done since then, but I haven't actually given a full review that's actually outlining why I love it so much, so I figured it was about time that I do that. The book focuses on Edda St. Clair, who is black, bisexual, a recovering anorexic, and sort of a ballerina. The last two, of course, are connected because while she still loves to dance ballet, she doesn't know if she wants to pursue it professionally because last time she tried to do that it was one of the major contributing factors to her anorexia getting really bad. She's also stuck in a small Nebraska town that isn't exactly the most open-minded. Before the book starts, basically her only friends were a group of lesbians that, as soon as they find out that Etta hooked up with a guy, they declare her a traitor, even though she's told them that she's bisexual about 50 million times. So she starts the book off pretty down the dumps, and the plot gets going when, in her anorexia therapy group, she meets a girl named Bianca, and she befriends her, and she befriends her brother James and their mutual friend Mason. And the four of them start getting along because they all have dreams of making it big and going to New York and going to the special performing arts school called Brentwood, which basically sounds like the school from Victorious. She also sort of takes Bianca under her wing because not only is Bianca younger, but she is also not recovering from the anorexia nearly as well as Etta has. I mean, Etta's recovered to the point where she's not technically anorexic anymore. She's listed as eating disorder not otherwise specified. In fact, that's actually where the title comes from because a lot of times Etta feels stuck in the middle. She's bisexual, so she doesn't really fit in with the straight groups or the gay groups. She isn't technically anorexic anymore, but she's not going to pretend like she's totally healthy. She likes to do ballet, but she doesn't know if she wants to do it professionally. She wants to help Bianca, but she doesn't know if she should do that instead of helping herself. And she wants Bianca to get to Brentwood, but she also wants herself to get to Brentwood. And she spends a lot of time debating whether she should in fact just throw the audition to the school to give Bianca a better chance. Anyways, I absolutely adored this book, and there's no way I have enough time to list all of the big and little reasons why, so here's just a small fraction of them. First off is that this was written for NaNoWriMo, either 2014 or 2015. The point being that this is another piece of evidence showing that you can totally write something for NaNoWriMo. Not only can it be published, but it can be super awesome as well. I'm also glad that it states that when Etta goes to her therapy groups, there are several guys in there dealing with anorexia and eating disorders as well. I mean, guys are usually assumed to just be totally fine with whatever body they have, but that's totally not true. There are plenty of guys that have eating disorders and body image issues, and I'd love to see a book that tackles that head on. Obviously, this book isn't going to do that. It is totally Etta's story and Bianca's story, but I think that just the fact that Hannah Moskowitz acknowledges that there are going to be guys in that group and it's not just a girl's issue is a big step in the right direction. Of course, the best part of this book is the voice. As soon as things got rolling, you immediately get sucked into Edda's world. It is so well written. It is written in the present tense, which is something I'm actually starting to come around to thanks to several books I've read that take place in the present tense this year. Um, but the present tense and the fact that Edda's voice is so clear and so well done, it really makes everything stand out and it really makes you feel everything that Edda feels. And so many other elements of the book are elevated from good to great because the voice is so strong. For one thing, I do not have an eating disorder and I'm not bisexual, but this is probably the closest I'll ever come to truly understanding what it means to have an eating disorder and what it is like to be bisexual and be stuck between two communities of just straight and just gay people. Everything comes across so clear and so heartfelt, it's impossible not to empathize with everything that Edda's going through. And I feel like I have such a greater understanding of these issues simply because of reading this book. It also makes Edda so relatable for anybody reading it, whether you identify with her on a personal level, whether you are bisexual or black or have dealt with eating disorders or you have been a ballerina at any point in your life. You don't have to have had any of those experiences to relate to Edda because her voice comes through so strong strong. Really, anybody who has been faced with tough choices, who has felt they're stuck between two decisions and doesn't know which one is right for them, what's best for them, and which option is truer to them, if you've experienced any of that kind of stuff, then you're 100% going to relate to Etta and the stuff that she goes through. So in conclusion, this book is perfection. You should read it and be amazed. This single novel made me want to get basically every single book that Hannah Moskowitz has ever written. It is beautiful and life-changing, and read it. So I hope you guys liked that review. If you want to see more, feel free to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. You can also check me out on social media. In the meantime, I am going to go wrap myself in a blanket and become a burrito because it is freezing AF up here. So until next time, I'll see you all later.